Hello everyone and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is September the 1st, 2024. And I know the first of the month is the day that you all look forward to. <clears throat> this is a special month because this is not only my birthday month, it is also my potiversary. And on top of all that, I am excited to say that I made 1500 this past week. Um, I want to talk about that for a moment. I, um, I know I told you on my regular video on Thursday that I would be releasing a tutorial for a blanket I made for Boggy Creek. And then it came out ahead of time, and I want to give you the backstory there. I uh, contacted them to let them know that I had uh, a blanket for Boggy Creek and that I had a tutorial for it, that I had more or less designed the blanket, and I used some of your suggestions. And they, of course, if... Um, if a podcaster designed a blanket for Boggy Creek and did a tutorial, they would have that podcaster come on their live show. I guess every Wednesday evening, they do a live show to show all of the blankets they have received from people out there, you viewers. Um, they like to show each week what they have received. And so they invite the podcaster to come on that video and talk a little bit about their blanket. So I notified them on Wednesday. I made my video for Thursday. I made it on Tuesday um, because I thought I would be busy on Wednesday. So I contacted them on Wednesday and said that I had it and they said they would get back to me as to when um, they would have me on their live show. And I figured, oh, it would be probably, you know, next week and that I would at least be able to tell you on this video that it was coming. But I got an email back that afternoon and said, could I come that evening on their live? So I, of course, I hopped on it and I said, sure, fine, I'm free this evening. And so I was on last Wednesday night. I think I have a link to it on last week's video. I did go in and update it and put a link on that video. And while I was on the video, they asked me if my uh, tutorial was live. And I said, well, it will be live tomorrow afternoon. I had programmed it to come on after lunch. And they said, well, if it were live now, we will be able to add it to our list. And I don't know where their active list is for people to go to and see all of the tutorials. But I said, okay, fine. If, if that's what you would like, when I get off of this live, I will go and change the release time and make it public right away. And I did that. As soon as I was done on their live, and I know that a few of you watched their live and you told me, well, you said hello, although I couldn't see comments, but you did tell me you caught me on the live. And I know that a number of you, because you get all my notifications, a number of you went and looked at the video. And in fact, I've even had somebody already show me the beginning square, the first base square that they've made from my tutorial. So I really appreciate that. And if you missed out on it all and want to see it, if you look at last week's video, the description box has a link to the live. And of course, you have notifications if you're a regular viewer of mine for my tutorial. And it came out last week. So um, thanks to all of that and a little more exposure, I had more people coming over to see my tutorial. And I guess they liked the um, 
They liked the tutorial. They liked the blanket. And while I was on that live podcast, um, we actually named the blanket. So if you're not a regular person getting my notifications and you want to see the tutorial for that blanket, it is called Ombre Paradise because I used four Ombre um, Red Heart Super Saver. Um, I used four colors of their Ombre to make that blanket plus black, of course. So um, I want to thank the people in the Boggy Creek Blanket Brigade for that exposure. I, um, at last count, I think I increased by something like 55 or 56 subscribers, which definitely put me over the top and seems to be still increasing the numbers. So thank you, a big thank you to all of you who have recently joined me. And for that, we are going to have not only a birthday celebration and a potiversary celebration, we're going to have a 1,500 uh, subscriber celebration. And I think what I will do is the day that I do my actual birthday, which is my birthday's technically on the 23rd. And the 23rd is a Monday, and I don't do videos on Mondays. So I plan to do all of the celebrating that Thursday, which is the 26th. And at that time, I will have a draw for the 1,500 subscribers. I've already started to gather items for it. And um, it will be probably a bit of a mystery box when the time comes. And I also want to put out there that maybe just maybe, and hopefully I'll know by Thursday, I will do a live video on my birthday, the 23rd. But I have to figure out the technology before then, which I'm going to spend this next week looking into to see if I can do that. So that's an update on all that has happened in the past three days or, or whatever um, since I last saw you and, and made my video. So I need to do a little bit of an update for new people. First of all, I am coming to you from Chatham, Ontario, which is in the southernmost tip of Canada. I am just an hour up the highway from the bridge between Canada and the U.S. Um, at Detroit. Detroit, Michigan is an hour from me. Um, I'm not going to go into all that I do on my videos. Hopefully those new subscribers will be back on Thursday and they'll get that spiel. <coughs> but I do want to explain what we're doing here today because I don't do this every week. This is a special once a month video. I have been for two years now, a year and more, year and eight months, been doing a monthly mal. Started out as a cow, but I switched it to a mal. The first year I started in January and I did the flower of the month every month for last year, 2023. And my viewers enjoyed doing it so much that we decided to keep it on. And now we're doing it this year. And this year I am doing tropical birds. And I picked them because they are so colorful. So once a month, I show a picture of a tropical bird, and that is the inspiration for my viewers to choose colors from that picture and do an item, any item they wish, and it can be crochet, it can be knitted, it can be felted, or you can weave. Whatever your yarn craft is, I've had somebody dye yarn to match, um, you make something during that month. It has to be made that month. It's not something you go in your stash and, and pull out. 
something you make that month. You send me a picture. I give you a deadline date. You send me the picture. I gather up all the pictures and then I do a slideshow of all of the items you, my viewers, are making. And today is the day, the first of the month, that I show the slideshow. And when we are finished, I show you, since it's the first of the month, I show you the inspiration bird for this next month, which is the bird for September. And again, I will give you a deadline date and we keep on going every month. And it's been some very, very colorful birds that we have seen this past eight months so far. And in fact, right now, I'm going to put a picture in the corner of the bird that was this month's inspiration. And I will show you the item I made, and it's called a Happy Shawl. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And it is, I chose something easy because I had been working on some more difficult items and I needed a break at the time. And I have quite a few difficult shawls lined up and I'm thinking I'm going to space them out I need a bit of a break. I was working on one this week and had to back off. So here is the happy shawl. And again, I will put one or two pictures up here in the comments so you can see the whole thing spread out. But basically, it is in the center, you do a granny shawl. That's all it is. Just the granny shawl. Then you stop, and I wish I had stopped just a little bit sooner. I had only this much left of the brown yarn, and I'll tell you about the yarns in a minute. And then you work on the side, one side of the shawl, and you put, again, it's just more granny squares, but you only work to the middle. And then you go to the other side and you work down across the middle and the other outside one to finish off and make the granny square into a triangle. Now, I did fewer rows, only one or two fewer in the brown than they said because I had run out of brown. And it still was more than I wanted because it made this shawl quite large. Now, if you like a large shawl, and let's see what my wing, it's about, it's a little more than my wingspan, so I have to think this is probably six feet across. If you like them large to wrap around, then that's fine. Follow their instructions. But it is a super, super easy pattern, and I will link it in the description box below. Just put it back up here. And that could be made in any colors, but of course I used our Inspiration Bird. And now I'm going to tell you about the colors I used. First of all, this is the um, aqua color I used. There is no tag, and I don't think there was a tag. And it's something I pulled out of a closet I have with some very old yarns that I've had for quite a while, so I don't remember too much of what's in the closet. And unfortunately, sometimes when I put the label in the center, it comes out and I lose it. So that, and I had quite a bit left. I think I would say about half of the cake got used. This is the brown that I said I had just this teeny bit left. I couldn't do another round. And this is yarn from Little Bicious Stitches. And it is um, well, upside down. It's hard to read. It doesn't say the makeup of it. It is 400 meters, and it's called Soft Sock bulky fingering so it's a little heavier i don't think it's any heavier than any other fingering 
It's just your normal average fingering. And I'm going to think it's a merino nylon blend. Maybe it says on the front. No, it doesn't say the percentages. And then finally, if you recall, I had a pink picked out that I really liked. It was a lighter pink that sort of matched the bird. But I found out when I started to work on this that it was DK. DK or sport. It was heavier than the other yarns. And I did not want to mix weights in this particular item. So I went in my stash to find this color. And I mean, it looks good with it. It's not a true match to the bird. It is darker than the bird. I would have liked a lighter color. A uh, lighter color would have given a little more contrast to the brown. But anyway, this is from Expression Fiber Arts, and you know how much I like their yarn. And this is Moon Gleam Fingering, which is 50% cotton and 50% mulberry silk. So a great yarn for those of you that have issues with wool. It's cotton and silk. There are 400 meters or 437 yards in it, and the color name is Fetish. And uh, I had a little problem in the windings procedure, so I had to break it off, and I ended up making two balls. So I have this much, plus from the bigger ball, I have this much, and I still have this mess that was in the middle. And I will detangle it and wind it around this ball and put it in the middle of that ball. So that's, I didn't weigh it, unfortunately, but I have to say I have maybe a quarter, maybe a hundred yards or so left over. So that is what I made for this month's bird. Now we are going to see the items that you have made. And I'm liking how it turns out when I put your picture across the whole screen. It's not like you gotta look at me the whole time. You wanna look at the items people have made. So here we go, here's our start. And the first item is a blanket, which comes from Cindy, who is in Costa Rica. Pinks and browns in this blanket. Next, we have Deb from Arizona, and she has made this dresser scarf. She said she adapted it, so I'm thinking maybe it was intended to be a scarf, and it's a pattern from Olga Poltava. <clears throat> then we have Linan from Florida, and she has made this milestone shawl and um, it comes from I Need It Crochet. Then Tammy, who is in Canada somewhere, has made this dishcloth and she put some other things around it to show that it de definitely was a dusty rose color because when I first got it, it didn't look the right color. Then Meredith, who is in Ohio, she is doing again her monthly square and it comes from Betty McNitt and you've seen her squares every month. And as well as her square, she has done a pet blanket again this month and she donates those, I think, to the local OSBCA, whatever it is in her area. Then we have all of our Judys. First, we have Judy C., who is in Ontario, in fact, Toronto. I met up with her at, at Knit City, Toronto. She has made this cardigan, which is a pattern from MJ Off the Hook. And then we have Judy P., who is in Missouri, and she has made this collection of coasters. 
then Barbara B., also in Missouri. Lots of tie-ins here. And Barbara has made this hat. And she says it's a pattern from Crystal at Bag o Day, and it is pattern number 735. Then Raylene, who is in South Australia, has crocheted this. It's called a Crochet Triangle Bactus Shawl. And it's by Hobby Sever, H-O-B-I-S-E-V-E-R. I have to think that's a company in Australia. I've never heard of it before. I did follow a link to it, and they have a lot of different crocheted items, so I guess lots of patterns. Then we have Marie, who is in Virginia, and as usual, she is busy making blankets for Boggy Creek, and here are the two she made this month. Next, we have our Barb another Barbara, Barbara M., who is in Alberta, and she said she barely got this done in time. It's a sweater. It is an Aklori, A K. L O R I design. It is Tunisian crochet and the pattern name is Garden Top. And my little furry friend is down there warming up, but not today, little guy. I have notes here I have to be reading. Now we have from Bonnie in PA, Pennsylvania, we have. Note this, Lynn Here we have a version of My Way Blarf, which is by Lynn at Nina's Knots Crochet. Lynn submits something every month to our um, crochet along. <laughs> yes, I know you want up. Then we have Donna from Ottawa. And she has knit this sweater, but crocheted the hem. So she says this is her own design, and she's incorporated both of her crafts. Next, we have Debbie P., who is in Arizona. And she said she used several Taylor Swift tutorials and adapted and altered them to come up with this top. <clears throat> and then Tina, who is also in Australia, has made this shawl that is from Cinnamon Stitches. I have seen this shawl done before, and I believe it's called Mulberry Street Shawl. It's a shawl that I actually want to make myself someday. Get on the long list of to-dos. <laughs> and then Maria, who is in Massachusetts, has done this shawl that is called Whispers in My Head. And once again, it is from Crystal at Bag o' Day. Cheryl who comes to us from Oregon, has made this infinity scarf. And she made this infinity scarf using one of my stitch tutorials from uh, this, this summer that I was doing. And she chose number six, the puff puffy moss stitch. It's a stitch I quite like. So... She has incorporated one of my tutorials, and thank you very much for that. Then another Judy, Judy T., who is also in Ontario, has done two serendipity squares this month. She does a serendipity square every month. And I'm forgetting who she follows to get those squares. But she needs 16 to make 
the blanket, I believe she's going to be making. So she needed, she needs to start doubling up some of the months. So she did two this month. Then Vicki, who is in Northern California, she has done two items. First, we have a slouchy hat, which is, these are both free, I believe, from Yarnspirations. And then she has done a scarf, and it this is a pattern from Premier. Then Ellen, who is in Illinois, has made this basic hexagon cardigan. I think we're all familiar with that. She didn't follow any particular tutorial, but there are dozens of them out there. And then Lillian, who is also in Ontario, up near Ottawa, has made this shawl. And it is the Northern Lights Shawl by Karen Hooley. And as you know, I did a focus on Karen Hooley, oh, maybe a year ago or even more. And if you're interested in more patterns by her, um, check out that video I did. Next, we have Annalise from, again, Massachusetts. And I think this is the first time Annalise has joined our monthly slideshow. And she has made this lacy scarf, and it is a pattern by Olga Poltava. And HD, and she did tell me once where she's from, but I have forgotten. If I don't get told regularly, I don't remember. There are too many people submitting. And she's made this bunny rattle. I think once before we had a rattle from somebody, not sure. Then Susan from New Jersey has done a set of squares again, and she is another viewer who intends to make monthly squares from the inspiration picture and eventually make a blanket. So I think we're going to see a number of blankets at the end of the year. I'm, I'm really hoping they all show us these squares put together. Then Rosanna, who is also in Ontario, has made this corner-to-corner -corner blanket. And again, her blankets go um, to a donation. And Kayla, who is from Iowa, has made this Mesa scarf, might be said Mesa, M-E-S-A scarf, and it is done in crony, uh, it is done in Tunisian crochet, and it's a pattern from Tony at uh, TL Yarn Crafts. Then we have Adam, who is in the UK, and he has done this boomerang shawl, and it is a pattern from a fiber spider using some of his own hand-dyed yarn. And Kathy W., who is also in Ontario, has made this virus shawl, and this is the first time she's done a virus shawl, and she said she enjoyed it. Then Debbie W. is also in California, has done this tendril shawl, whoops, has done this tendril shawl, and it is a pattern by Carmen Heffernan, and it is a pattern I have done before, and again, I did a focus on Carmen Heffernan. If you want to look back for more of her patterns, you'll find a video where I talked about her. And now we have Carmen from California, who has done this shawl by Wilma Westenberg, and it is called the Such Simple Shawl. And I'll just clue you in. I am going to do a focus on Wilma this month. Then we have Christine, 
who is from Kentucky, and she has done this granny square. I, it's a variation of a granny square, and it's a pattern she followed by Blossom Crochet, who is a YouTube channel, so she would have followed a tutorial. Hello there. Then we have Denise, and Denise is in Minnesota, and she has submitted two items. She has done this hat with no pattern. She said a very basic top-down hat. She said more, but I didn't make note. And she made these footy slippers, she called them, and it's a YouTube, it's a YouTube tutorial by T.L. Yarncraft. All right, and moving on, we have Rebecca from Mississippi, and she has done this shawl that is called Finding Balance. I call them fashion scarves because they aren't as big as a full size shawl and it's a, one of these one skein patterns by CJ Brady and you know I talk about her a lot and I did a focus on CJ Brady way back it was my very first designer focus then we have Naomi who is in Washington and she has actually designed this wrap I guess she hasn't named it. I didn't see a name, but it is of her own making. And I, I believe she plans to eventually release her patterns. Then we have Josephine in North Carolina. And she has submitted the very familiar Albert. And I'm sure you've seen lots of Alberts. And it is on Ravelry, so this is a different color variation. Then we have Donna D. Excuse me for a second. I'll take a drink. Who has submitted two, pattern, um, two items. Donna D. is in New York. And... I'm thinking it's also her first time submitting something to our slideshow. So many of you now, it's hard to keep track. And this first one, this is very, very different from anything we've had, is seashells. I thought they were quite unique. And it is from somebody on Etsy called Hegeldab, H-E-E-G-E-L, Dab, D-A-B. I don't know if I said it right. And second of all, she has submitted this scarf uh, called Stormy Seas, and it is a pattern by Dorian Owen. <clears throat> and then we have another um, submission of a Carmen Heffernan design from Jackie in North Carolina. And Carmen Heffernan, by the way, is also Annie Design Crochet. Uh, and she, she can be found on the internet. <clears throat> and then we have Hannah. Hannah is from Austria. And she has submitted um, a knitted emotional support chicken. And she says she has made eight of these emotional support chickens. And then we have Melissa, who is from Pennsylvania, and she has made this very unique headband. And Michelle, who is <coughs> from Utah, and she has before submitted, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> outfits that she makes for her resin cat. And this outfit is made of overlay mosaic granny squares, and it's a pattern by Juniper and Oaks. And Renee from Alabama 
has done this solid mosaic moss square blanket and it's a YouTube uh, YouTube tutorial by Beba B E B A Beba Beba blanket and then Joyce from Southern California has made this cowl and it's by Fiber Flux and obviously very fluffy because of the Surrey alpaca and silk in it. Looks very luxurious and apparently is very, very soft. And I just got some yarn that reminds me of that. I might make that pattern. And then finally, we have Sherry from Alabama who has done this hexagon blanket called Summer Love, again by Fiber Flux. And Sherry says she has dyed the yarn to make this blanket. So I wanna thank all of you for submitting pictures for this month. We had a total of 43 people make submissions, and you saw a number of them submitted multiple items. So that is pretty exciting to have 43. We're getting over 40 every month, but I'm going to say it right here, and I'll mention it again later. I have a goal, and it's not anything I have any control over, but since next month is the big celebration month and we have quite a few new viewers on the channel now, I would like to send out a challenge to everybody who has ever submitted because I know some submit one month and others another month. But if we all got together and submitted one month, I think we could get 50 people submitting items and I would love for that to happen in September the big celebration month I think more of you will be watching throughout the month and I'm going to make a plug <laughs> almost every week for people to submit something you don't have to make large items as you saw yes somebody made a blanket somebody else made a sweater but somebody other people made smaller items like coasters and granny squares now some of those granny squares were bigger than others uh, some made a one skein uh, fashion scarf as I call it if you check out Carmen Heffernan and CJ Brady they both have one skein patterns many of them and I would think in, in a full month, you could make a one skein item. Some made cowls. They don't take as much time. Infinity scarves. There are lots of things that can be made in one month. And I would love, absolutely love to have 50 submissions for this month. That would really make me very happy. So... We have to talk about, uh, what order am I going to do this in? I'm going to talk about the yarn and the um, inspiration for this coming month. This is a color I think you all must have in your stash somewhere. So I'm going to put up the bird, by the way, before I put it up. Do we have guesses as to what color this bird is going to be. Remember, it's September. So here, I hope some of you made a guess. Maybe you put it in the comments, maybe not. But here is the bird. I'm going to put it full screen and leave it long enough. Here it is. And I'm leaving it long enough that you can get a screenshot for it because I know a lot of you like to show it on your channel or you just ha want the picture somewhere handy to look at in your photo album when you're picking your yarn. And there you go. Of course, it would have to have blue in it, not because it's my favorite color, but because September's birthstone is sapphire. 
and now I'm going to move the picture over to the corner and I'm going to show you the yarn I picked. I have two skeins of this and here it is. Blue and black like the bird. Now it's maybe not quite as blue, bright blue that the bird is, but still it is blue and black and I think you can all see all the shimmers. This is, as Juan would say, all the things that make Judy happy. <laughs> so let me tell you about the yarn. First of all, it is EFA yarn and it is shimmering, shimmer fingering. And they don't make this anymore. They changed to something else and then that got uh, discontinued as well. Will they ever bring it back? I don't know. But shimmer fingering is 65% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 15% stellina. And I really like stellina in the yarn better than Lurex because it's much softer. You don't feel it. It seems to be part of the yarn and it has a much more delicate shimmering look. It has 400 meters or 437 yards. And there's a story behind this. The color is ra the raven. Now, every, this became, the raven became such a popular color on EFA that they bring it back every fall and they bring it back on a different base. So every year you can get the raven on a different base from EFA. And I haven't heard them say anything yet, but I suspect in September, that is when they will bring <coughs> this yarn back. And I did get it on another base. And I don't remember what base that was. But I have two of them. So in my mind, this is going to make a great shawl. Two of these will make a shawl. So I'll either make a regular, like um, maybe a crescent shawl. That would be nice. I have several crescent shawls I'd like to make or a big um, triangular, uh, asymmetrical triangle. But I think I'm going to look up crescent shawls and make it. And you can bet this is staying in my private collection of handmade items. I don't keep a lot of what I make, but this one is definitely a Judy one. So that's what I'm making for the coming month. And we need to get a calendar out here. And September the 30th is a Monday. That makes sense. And October the 1st is a Tuesday. And yes, I will do I will do a video on the Tuesday, even though you'll get another one on the Thursday. And so the deadline I'm going to ask, and this is a wee bit earlier than usual, but I am going to ask that you try to get your finished items, your picture of the finished items to me on Friday, September the 27th. And I'll remind you on Thursday the 26th that the deadline is the 27th because um, Monday is a busy day for me. I teach a class, so I need to use the Saturday to make up the list. It takes couple hours to make that list and the Sunday to make the video. So I'm going to go with the 27th of September. I'll be reminding you every week and I'll be encouraging you every week to do something. Now for those that are new, when you finish making your item, you have to email me a picture at my email address and it's always Every video, it's in the description box below, but it's judyscreations21 at gmail.com. 
I will try to put it, I'll try to put it across the screen. Uh, doing text messes up some other things. When you send me the email with the picture, please put something like September cow or bird cow in the subject line. And your email must include, first of all, the picture, of course, your name and where you are from, your location. And if you have followed a pattern or a tutorial, we would love to know the pattern and designer because I'm sure you saw some things that came up today that you really liked and you thought, oh, I'd like to make that. So I like to tell that information. What yarn you used, you know, everybody would use what they have. A lot of people use this inspiration to do their stash diving and trying to find something in their stash. And I went into my stash last fall and everything I've made this year for the monthly um, Mal has been yarn I had in my collection. <laughs> and um, this is beautiful yarn that I wanted to put to use. So I'm really glad I had a picture it would go with. So that's what I need. Name, location, picture, of course. Um, pattern, name, and designer. Um, if you can indicate if you have stitch, uh, crocheted or knit. Sometimes I can't really tell in the picture. I also want to suggest that you try very hard to get good lighting to get a good picture because sometimes they're so dark you can't see or you can't tell the color, it doesn't come through right, or it's blurry. Um, try to, some people will take it outside and take a picture that seems to work better if you possibly can. So just a few tips that you try to get the best picture you can. So that's what you've all been waiting for. There is the bird of the month and I'm going to sit down tonight and look through um, my patterns. I know I have some crescent shawls and that's what this is going to become. And finally, for those that are new, there is one last thing I do every month. And I know that some people participate for this reason only, but I know that most of my viewers who submit things do it because they love the inspiration and the picture motivates them to do something but we do one last thing and that is we have a wheel that we spin and here is here is the wheel and I'm going to spin it all 43 names are no one person prefers to not be on the wheel but all the other 42 names are on this wheel. And I'm going to spin it right now. And we wait for the wheel to tell us the winner because I've seen it stop and start before. So here we go. Deb M. And Deb M. is in Arizona. Congratulations to you, Deb. I do have your email, uh, not your email, I have your mailing address. So I will get this in the mail to you by early next week when I go out to do um, some other errands. Congratulations, Deb. And Deb is winning a gradient cake. And I'm sure she will put it to good use in a shawl of some sort. I'm not sure what your your favorite colors are, Deb, so I don't know if this is in your, your uh, color wheel or not. But congratulations, this is for you. So I hope that um, at least 50 of you will submit something for this next month. 
using the colors of the bird. <clears throat> and remember, September the 27th is when they, they have to get to me. And I'm really looking forward. I mean, basically, it's blue and black. I know a lot of you don't like to work with black, so it's going to be mostly blue. And you know, a single color is fine or finding various shades of blue and making a gradient blue item, whatever. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing what we get this month. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you back again each week, September the 5th, 12th, 19th and 26th for sure, um, to help me celebrate this big month. I have lots and lots to celebrate. So until Thursday, happy hooking.